Hi everyone, what's the scoop? It's SMA Program Lifecycle Live, week six, and I'm your host, Sophie Kimball. With the opening of the SMA office in the UK, I'd like to spend this week's scoop telling you all about the iconic Royal International Air Tattoo, also known as RIAT, which took place this past weekend at the RAF Fairford in Gloucestershire, England. Known as COTS World, it is considered the biggest and the best air show in the world, featuring aerobatic and static displays from many European countries. AJ Patel and Graham Robson attended this event this past weekend. To quote AJ, this isn't just an air show, it's a tribute to the ingenuity and passion that fuels the marvels of aviation. As the premier air show in the United Kingdom, RIAT showcases the latest in innovation in aviation technologies and skills with ground exhibits and spectacular flying displays that capture the imagination this year's event included around 250 aircrafts either displayed on the tarmac for close inspection or flying high up in the sky demonstrating their incredible capabilities and to quote graham RIAT was a true international display of military flying, and although there was business being done, it felt like a true celebration of new and old. Farnborough covers civil and military and includes the supply chain, but it was an absolute beast, an industry in, in and of itself representing a truly global, maybe excluding Russia and a few others, industry. We visited a number of clients, each of them talking about 200 plus meetings per day, and it was a visual reference to the future growth in aviation. Upon entering the airfield, RIAT featured a lineup of F-16s arranged in a photogenic manner to commemorate their 50th anniversary of the airplane. And why is the F-16 so important? The F-16 is a compact multi-role fighter aircraft that is highly maneuverable and has proven itself in air-to-air -air combat and air-to-surface attack. It provides relatively low-cost, high-performance weapon systems for the U.S. and allied nations. Originally designed by General Dynamics and now manufactured by Lockheed Martin, the F-16's key features include a frameless bubble canopy for enhanced visibility, a side-mounted control stick for ease of control during maneuvers, a 30-degree reclined ejection seat to reduce the effect of G-forces, and the first use of a fly-by-wire flight control system, making it an agile aircraft. It's also called the Fighting Falcon. Also on the tarmac was a prototype of the UK's upcoming most advanced fighter jet with sixth generation capabilities called the Tempest. Developed by a partnership including BAE Systems, Leonardo UK, Rolls-Royce, MBDA, and the UK Ministry of Defense, referred to as Team Tempest, this aircraft is designed with manned stealth capabilities. AJ waited in line for over an hour for the opportunity to sit in the seat of this mock-up future combat aircraft system. Rolls-Royce, a member of the Tempest team, actually hosted this opportunity for the public. And if anyone from Rolls-Royce is watching, yes, SMA is available to support the team. Some of AJ and Graham's favorite flybys included the U.S. Air Force 180 Fighter Squadron's demonstration of the F-16 Fighting Falcon, the most ubiquitous advanced fighter jet in the free world. Then we had the McDonnell Douglas CF-188A Hornet flown by the Royal Canadian Tactical Fighter Squadron. Incredibly powerful and impressive. And a fun fact, our very own Fox Fallon flew an F-18 and... Dave Patterson flew all sorts of large aircrafts. Then we have the Midnight Hawks, the official aerobatic team of the Finnish Air Force, named for their tradition of flying a demonstration at midnight on Midsummer Night's Eve. The Italian Air Force demonstration of Panav Panav Panavia Corporation's Tornado, a multi-role twin-engine airplane designed for low-level penetration of enemy defenses. Then there was the Royal Navy Air Black Cat Squadron's display of Leonardo Corporation's Wildcats. And these helicopters 
danced through the air. Graham mentioned that after the Red Arrows made the case for the Air Force, the Black Hats came forward for the Navy with their Lynx pair helicopters. Not as fast as the Jets, but an amazing display of interplay and capability. And I still do not understand how a helicopter safety performs a loop, and maybe the lesson from that is trust. You need to accept from others in a team that they have done their work and take their word that trust from their word that if you trust them, it's achievable. Next, we have the British Westland Corporation's historic Lynx helicopters shown right here, as Graham mentioned. They're known for their speed and utility features, and these helicopters had a long and distinguished career within the British Army. Next, we have the Boeing RC-135 rivet joint plane flown by the U.S. Air Force Reconnaissance Squadron number 95, an impressive large airplane with a length of 136 feet, a wingspan of 130 feet, and a height of 42 feet. Wowza. <laughs> there were displays by air forces from across Europe, Britain, we, there was also the US, but there was Italy, Lithuania, Slovenia, Sweden, France, Germany, Canada, the Czech Republic, Royal Danish, Royal Moroccan, Turkey, Spain, Belgium, and Qatar, making it a truly international air display. This is AJ with someone from the Swedish Air Force. And of course, the absolute highlight of the show was the Royal Air Force's Red Arrows ac aerobatic team. Watching the Red Arrows up close performing their amazing aerobatics under the blue skies was absolutely incredible. AJ and Graham were in the right flight line as if they were watching the Hawks. For an hour, these nine planes stunned audiences with their air acrobatics, including their iconic Diamond Nine formation, symbolizing their diamond anniversary. Graham had this to say about the Red Arrows. It's been a long time since he's seen a full Red Arrows display, having witnessed the Blue Angels before, and he's always struck at the skill on show. But high individual capability is only a foundation. The teamwork, communication, and preparation required are off the charts. It's really a true team effort, far wider than the nine individuals on the show. There are lessons for us to parallel as we think about high performance and interdependency that we have with the teams we work with to support their success. And Graham's next kickoff session may include a picture from the display. How cool is that? And right here we have the diamond formation. The planes fly in a tight diamond formation showcasing their ability to maintain precise positions. This is their signature formation. Next we have the arrow formation where the planes fly in a V shape resembling an arrow highlighting their sharp appearance. Then we have the serpent roll flyby. The aircrafts fly side by side in a straight line demonstrating the pilot's skill in maintaining even spacing. Then we have the tornado flyby. The planes start in an arrow formation where they start to spiral around each other until they end the display in the diamond formation. These are some more images of the tornado display and also some rollback displays. Individual and formation loops and rolls highlight the agility and aerodynamic capabilities of the aircraft. Then we have the opposition barrel flyby. This display happens when the red arrows fly towards each other with ultimate precision. My favorite here is the Hannah brake flyby. The planes converge and then rapidly disperse in all directions, simulating an explosion. Super cool. <laughs> then we have the goose flyby. The planes stick together in an arrow formation as they arc around the crowd, displaying their beautiful colors. Finally, we have the slow pass flyby. The aircrafts fly at a reduced speed, allowing everyone to appreciate their beauty and detail. As you noticed in the photographs, smoke trails were a key feature of the aerobatic displays, significantly enhancing the impact of the flybys by helping the audience track the plane's flight, highlighting all of their loops, rolls, and other maneuvers, showcasing their absolute precision. And Dickie, some if you're on, yes, we ordered you your very own set of the Red Arrows postage stamps for your collection. How awesome is that? <laughs> the RIAT has evolved into an important showcase for the world's military, taking place the week before the biannual Farnborough Air Show. It's rumored that many business deals between countries are struck here and then announced at Farnborough. 
R.I.A.T. is a truly spectacular show with something for everyone. I hope that you all enjoyed this time experiencing a truly memorable day at R.I.A.T. 2024. Now, on to our art flash. The R.I.A.T. commissioned Barry John to create a piece as a visual celebration of the R.I.A.T. 2024 air show, and protecting the skies is the result. As an Army veteran, Barry worked with other veterans in the community to combat loneliness and isolation through engagement and creativity. The artist said it was a huge honor to be able to create these artworks in support of the Royal Air Force Charitable Trust. That's so awesome. And so, that's the scoop. This week's flavor is gooey butter cake. We'll see you all next week. Bye.